Namaste, I'm Brad Terrell. Welcome to this daily mobility for front splits class. In this class, we're going to focus on isolating both actively and passively the three big areas that we need to focus on the most in order to get into a front splits comfortably and to generally just feel much stronger in a front splits position. Those three areas are the hamstrings, the quad and the hip flexor, as well as the IT band. As mentioned, we're going to focus on the three different areas that we need to focus on the most in order to comfortably drop into that front split position. We're going to start off with hamstrings. So with every area, we're going to focus on act actively moving through it and then focus on passively holding a certain posture or postures in order to kind of relax and adapt to the posture. So we're going to start off with hamstrings here. I want you to dig your left heel to the floor and just nice and slow. I want you to just lean over your front leg and I want you to sweep the floor. So notice how the arms are just kind of swinging back and forth here. I want you to sweep the floor if you can. If not, you can go ahead and sweep your shin or the foot and then come back up, switch it sides. You're going to sweep and switch. Sweep and sweep and continue. Deep breaths here. You can also kind of do this from one end of your mat to the other. If you'd like, turn it around. Or you can just do it in one place. Beautiful. Sweep. Again, if you're having a hard time reaching for the floor, sweep your shin, sweep, sweep, and sweep. Beautiful. Good, you can shake the legs out. Now let's get into a downward facing dog position. Really great position to start opening up the hamstrings. Now, again, for some of us, we may not be able to get those heels down right away and we're gonna work on that in just a second. So from here, I'd like for you to bend your elbows just a little bit, allow your chest to move forward. I want you to slowly start moving back as you dig your right heel to the floor, stretching out that right hamstring, and then slowly moving back forward and switch left side. You can also come all the way out to a full plank position if you'd like. Not necessary, as long as you move forward, take weight out, and then switch it sides. Slowly moving forward, inhale, exhale. So you're bending one knee as you straighten the opposite leg. Let's go one more to each side. Beautiful. From here, if you can, I'd like for you to try and drop both heels down. If not, allow the knees to bend just a little bit as you continue to work on getting those heels a little bit closer to the floor. Keeping that slight internal hip rotation in downward facing dog. Let's go one more deep breath in downward facing here. Beautiful, you can drop to the knees. Good. From here, I'd like for you to cross your legs out behind you. Crossing the legs, bring it out in front. Beautiful. Now from here, we're gonna focus on some active pulses, really focusing on isolating one hamstring at a time. So if you've done, if you've already done the daily mobility for middle splits, you've found yourself into this internal rotation. 
Now, we're not necessarily going to focus so much on this back leg, although you could feel a lot going on here, which is part of the posture. In this posture, we just want to really isolate this leg. If you feel too uncomfortable here, what you can do is place a block underneath your sit bones or a pillow just to elevate yourself a little bit. Draw the hands out in front of you, and I want you to bring your chin to meet your big toe, keeping that foot in dorsiflexion, and slowly draw yourself back up. Okay, so we're gonna inhale forward and back. So you can go for a round six. Another four, three. Two, and one. Beautiful, you can bring this left leg back. Again, if you're feeling quite a bit to that hip flexor of the back leg, again, that's good news. We wanna kinda go through that. But just to kinda re reiterate, this drill, we're isolating the front leg. So if there's too much going on in that back leg, Take your time, you wanna get into a position where you can kinda of sit here comfortably so that you can pay more attention to stretching out your hamstring as opposed to just dying over here. So again, what you can do, place a block, elevate yourself, that'll take pressure away from the hip flexor and then you can just focus on isolating that front leg. We'll see if we can go the other side. This time, internal rotation of the right leg. Try and keep the knee aligned with the hip Hands to the floor, just even fingertips to the floor. Move the chin and the chest forward. Back up for six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Beautiful. Bring that right leg back forward and shake your legs out a little bit. Good, now we'll see if we can kind of hold that passively. So bringing left leg back, again, try and line up the knee with the hip and leaning forward. Lean as far forward as you can. If you're still way back here, that's fine. Again, if you can elevate yourself, slowly move yourself forward. Eventually you'd like to find yourself in a position where you can place the forearms and perhaps release the forehead down and not forcing, really allowing the body again to adapt. Breathing into the belly, into the diaphragm. So as I mentioned, you can go ahead and use a strap for a lot of the passive postures that we're gonna get into, like this one. So you can grab a strap, wrap it around your foot, and move your chin and your chest forward, or if you rather, just lean over that right leg. Deep breaths. Go for one more. Beautiful. Slowly drawing ourselves up. We'll switch it sides. Left leg forward, right leg back. Again, take your time. You're looking for that quad to core connection. Relax the muscles of your face. It's always a tricky situation sometimes when, when we're holding more intense passive postures. We hold a lot of tension in our face, maybe even the forehead. Those are just things to kind of notice throughout our practice. And we may also notice that when we're in other stressful situations in our life that we keep that same tension there. So if we can learn how to let go throughout our practice, we can find more ease in other areas of our life. Let's go for a few more breaths. Good. 
can also grab onto the ball of the foot and pull it back if you can. Again, this is a little bit of a progression here. carefully drawing yourselves back up so again it's possible that you only made it up to here and that's fine it just takes time it's a balance of playing around with the active drills and the passive work both are definitely needed in order to feel a lot more comfortable and stronger in your splits so we can bring that right leg back around you can shake the legs out so from here I want you to keep your hands out in front of your chest sitting up nice and tall. We're going to start by lifting the left leg up and from here what I'm going to aim to do is bring my foot in a position where I can come up into a seated Cossack. So from here I'm going to try and lean up and then what I'm really focusing on is the stretch into the groin and the hamstring of the right leg. If I can't make it up it's fine. What I can do is just use my fingertips and then try and draw my hands and then slowly draw myself back down. I'll bring the leg back forward and I'll move to the other side. Again, I'm going to do the modified version here. Hands to the chest to start. Bring the foot out behind you. Lift yourself up. See if you can stand up in a Cossack position. Foot in dorsiflexion. Drop yourself back down and release. So progression, try not using the hands. Try and come up without the use of the hands. Lifting up and drop and continue. We'll see if we can go four, six to each side or three to each side, six total. Keeping breath fluid here. Beautiful. Again, lift that leg up nice and high. Good. Beautiful. Now a little bit of a progression. Again, if you had a hard time with that last one, continue to focus on that or use the hands. This next one is going to be the same thing. It'll lift that leg up. Again, we're keeping that quad to core connection. We're going to drop the foot and then from here I'd like for you to place your hands to the back of your head. Attempt to drop the elbow down and you'll find yourself in a deeper hamstring stretch here. And again we're looking for that active stretch. Drop the elbow, release and drop. So see if you can perhaps keep the hands to the back of your head as you lift drop your elbow to the floor, release, and continue. Beautiful. Maybe we're still using the hands and that's okay. Let's go one more to each side. Beautiful. Bringing that right leg back forward. Again, you can shake those legs out. So you should be working up a little bit of a sweat here. Good. All right, so we're gonna continue with those active IRs, so active internal rotations. That's essentially what's happening when we start moving the bent knee into an internal rotation of the hip. Now, again, we're going to attempt to do the same thing as we did earlier, bring that leg into that same position, and then start to pulse into the hamstring. So we're going to find that active IR, lift up, again, you can keep your hands in front of your chest, lift, find IR, pulse, draw yourself back up, and back, okay? So this is a really great drill because this is essentially all you really need to focus on, this little drill right here. 
and over time you can find a lot more space, a lot more strength into your splits. So eventually, instead of just dropping it here, you can drop it a little bit further back and a little bit further back until you find that full splits position and you can completely internally rotate that back hip, okay? Perhaps not this second, perhaps not today, but over time. So the real goal here is really try and draw that knee as far back as you can. We'll see if we can go again, three to each side, six total. Pulse, back up, lift. If you need to use your hands to the floor, that's fine. Drop, pulse. Good. Good, one more to each side. Try and bring that knee a little bit further back. So really find all the muscles of the hip flexors at work here. Good, shake those legs out. Great, so let's focus on one last passive hamstring position, which is very popular to try. So I want you to draw yourself into almost like a lunging position here, like I'm in right now. And I want you to start leaning back so you dig your heel to the floor. So your big toe is reaching back for the shin as you start leaning back. And then you find that really nice hamstring stretch. Continue to move your chin towards your big toe. You can make this a little bit active as you work into the passive position. So that's often how I work. It's just moving through the active, and then once I find and create more space, then I can relax, focus on my breath, isolate it a lot more. Release your forehead to the shin. And you can slowly move back forward. We'll switch its sides. Bring right foot forward. Again, you wanna start with the hip above the knee. You can start moving the hip a little bit further back. So you can tell here my hips a little bit further back of my back knee. It doesn't necessarily need to be aligned. You can find a little bit of that active pulse before allowing yourself to completely release within the posture. See if you can even spread the toes of the foot as you draw that ball back toward the shin, back towards your face. One more deep breath. Beautiful. Slowly moving forward. Walk that foot back. We'll take a moment here into child's pose. Releasing the forehead down. You can shake your hips side to side. Good. When you're ready, you can dry yourself up into a hero's pose. So now, let's focus on our quads and hip flexors. So from here, I'd like for you to place your hands out behind you and just see if you can start to lift your glutes off your heels. Now, if you feel too much pressure to the knee, perhaps find yourself some blocks that you can push down as opposed to just reaching straight out behind you. So if you can, just fingertips to the floor. If not, perhaps go ahead and use some blocks and see if you can start to lift your glutes off of your heels. 
I'm just holding here. Eventually you can drop palms. The glutes are strong. So whenever you're really focusing on a passive quad stretch, we're always, always, always focusing on keeping the glutes strong as well as the core. But really focusing on the glutes and that way we're not tilting the pelvis forward. We're keeping the pelvis neutral by engaging the glutes here. So we'll see if we can hold here for, let's go five deep breaths. Two more. One last one. And carefully releasing. Good. And you can actually take a moment once again into your child's pose. Shake your hips side to side. And carefully drawing ourselves back up. Bring yourself into a cobbler's position. Now let's continue focus on some active work for the quads and the hip flexor. Now this particular drill, we're really gonna focus on our internal hip rotation, which is really great for both the middle split and the front split. So what I want you to do here, and you can keep your hands together I want you to drop the outside of your left knee to the floor and notice how this right leg, you have a little bit more range, a little bit more room to move it. What we're really focusing on is that internal rotation of the back leg and seeing if we can come right into a pigeon position. You'll also notice, again, like I mentioned earlier, the hip flexor rides all the way up to that low back. So here we're focusing on that internal rotation of the back hip. Find yourself in your pigeon, slowly draw yourself back. You can straighten the leg, bring yourself back into a cobbler's and we'll move to the other side. So we can separate it into three spots. We've got cobbler's, one, and to this half straddle position, two. Number three would be our pigeon. Okay, so our upright pigeon. If we're feeling too much to the low back here, but we still want to focus on that internal rotation, maybe stay a little bit lower to the floor. But again, if I'm doing this, I'm focusing slightly more so on my front leg than I am on my back hip and my back leg. If you can, you want to try and stay up a little bit, but you can keep your hands to the floor if you need to. Slowly draw yourself back to two, back to one. Okay, so starting one, two, three, two. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed it that much, please hit subscribe. It means a lot. And if you're someone who's looking to take their practice to that next level, whether you're a beginner looking to simply improve their practice or even an advanced practitioner looking to fine tune their practice, head over to B Movement Academy, my own online school of yoga and movement where you can find all of my premium content and exclusive programs that will meet you every step of the way to meet any of those movement or mindfulness goals. Most light and love. Namaste.